Hello, hello, hello. Here we are with graph transformations. Moving on to lesson number eight, composite functions. What we have just done is look at all six of the graph transformations that you get in higher. Let's have a quick summary of each one because you will, will need this for moving on. So y equals f of x plus or minus some number that will shift the graph up or down. So a plus moves the graph up. Uh, vertically and a minus will move it down. If you have y equals f of x plus or minus some number that is when the graph shifts to the left or the right. Remember a positive moves the graph in the negative direction and a negative will move the graph in the positive direction. If you have y equals negative f of x that will reflect the graph in the x-axis. Remember if you have y equals x squared or if you have negative x squared, changing it from a positive to a negative reflects it in the x-axis. If you have y equals f of negative x, that will also reflect the graph, but this time in the y-axis. Remember you're changing the x from a positive to a negative, so instead of being at, for example, 5, it will be at negative 5. We're reflecting it over the y-axis. If you have y equals k f of x, well think back to sine x, if you put a number in front of it, 2 sine x, 3 sine x, that will stretch the graph or compress it in your y axis. So it will stretch or compress it vertically. If you have y equals f of kx, that will also stretch or compress the graph, but this time it will be in the x axis. So thinking back to sine x, if you put a number in front of the x, so sine 2x or sine 3x, that will compress the graph um, horizontally. You need to know each of these. And if I asked you to graph negative f of x, I'm sure you could do it no problem, or f of x plus 7, you could do that no problem. But a lot of the time, what you might get is you might get more than one transformation. For example, you could get something like this. So I might ask you to graph y equals negative f of x plus 5. Thinking about these parts individually, I'm sure you remember what you do. y equals negative f of x. How does that change the graph? Lily? Well done, Lily. Yes, that will reflect the graph in the x-axis. The plus 5. What does the plus 5 do, Andrew? You're a genius. Well done. It will move the graph up 5. Well done. But which do we do first? Do you flip the graph and then move it up? Or do you move the graph up and then flip it? You need to think about a certain word to know what to do. Sometimes it will not make a difference and you'll end up with the same answer, but a lot of the time it will make a difference. So the word you need to think about, it's the name that I am going to call my firstborn child, Bidmas. Uh, no, you won't. Or Bodmas. Nope. Or maybe not. But that is what you need to think about. So in this example above, you would multiply first. So treat the negative as a negative 1 times f of x. So we're multiplying that. We're flipping it first of all. And then add or subtract come on the end. So then you would move the graph up or down. Let's look at an example then. So here is the graph of y equals f of x. Graph y equals 3 minus f of x. So here, there's more than one transformation. We've got the negative f of x, and we've got this 3. To make this easier to understand, to picture, what you can always do is you can change the order, just reverse the way you're writing it. So we have a negative f of x, and we've got a positive 3. So write the negative f of x first, and then put the positive 3 just on the end. It just makes it far easier. Thinking back then to a bid mass, Brackets, indices, divide, multiply, add, subtract. What would come first? Would it be the add? Or would it be multiplying by the negative 1? Well, it's the multiply that comes first. So we'd think about y equals negative f of x. y equals negative f of x, that's when you reflect the graph in the x-axis. So reflecting it in the x-axis, let us change that to a dotted line. Reflecting it in x you will end up with something like that. Your x-axis will become a line of symmetry. Try and be as accurate as you can when you are sketching this. Each of the points then will be reflected over. Remember, it is the x value that stays the same and the y value will change. The y value will become a negative or if it was already negative, it will become positive. So negative seven zero will stay as negative seven zero. 
This point at negative 2, 7 will be negative 2, negative 7. The point 0, 6 will be 0, negative 6. And the point 2, 5 will be 2, negative 5. You are changing the y value when you're reflecting it over. So you'd end up with something like that. After that, you can think about the plus 3. What does the plus 3 do in the end of a function? Well, that will move the graph vertically up 3 places. So the graph will be moving up. Think about the points then. If you move them all up, this point here at negative 7, 0 will now be up at negative 7, 3. This point at negative 2, negative 7 will be at negative 2, negative 4. 0, negative 6 will be up at 0, negative 3. And 2, negative 5 will move up 3 units to 2, negative 2. And that is the graph that you will get. If you look at them side by side, you can see that we have flipped this graph in the x-axis and then moved up three places. So that is y equals 3 minus f of x. Let's look at another example. Here's the graph of y equals f of x. Graph y equals f of 2x minus 6. So this time we have 2x. So we're multiplying the x by 2 and we've got that negative there. So which do we do first? Well, again, think about bid mass. Well, we're multiplying here by 2. So we'd multiply first of all, and then the add or subtract would come on the end. Because we've got f of 2x, remember, uh, think back to sine x and then sine 2x. Sine 2x meant you had two of the sine waves between 0 and 360. So we halved the x coordinate. Having the x coordinates here then, if you have the 12, the 6, the 0, and the 4, that would be your new points. So 12, 0 would move to 6, 0. 6, 10 would move to 3, 10. 0, 4 would stay at 0, 4. And 4, 2 would move to 2, 2. So we'd end up with that. So that would be our new graph of f of 2x. Think next about the minus 6, plus or minus on the end. What does that do to the graph? Well, that will then move it down 6. So move each coordinate vertically down 6 places, 6 units. Moving all the points then, if you think about that, 6, 0 will move to 6, negative 6. 3, 10, if you take 6 off that, will go to 3, 4. 0, 4, take 6 off the y value, will move to 0, negative 2. 2, 2 will move to 2, negative 4, meaning your graph will then look like that. It can be get a bit messy when you are sketching this, so you are best with this red dotted line and the blue dotted line, they are a bit thicker so you can see them, uh, but just do them as a faint line. And then obviously your final answer, you could make that a bit thicker and you should end up with something that looks like that. Looking at them side by side, we'll see we have compressed this uh, answer here on the right in the X axis and then we moved every single point down six. Again, sometimes it doesn't make a difference, the order that you apply the transformations, but sometimes it does. So always think about bid mass when you are doing this, or bud mass. Okay. Try the questions. This time it's the maths in action. I'm changing the book for this. So page 35, 36, questions 3 to 11. You are applying more than one transformation to some of the questions, not all of them. Good luck. Have fun.